Okay, everybody. I have something really cool to tell you about. If you haven't heard yet about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain here. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will uh, distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one single place. Now, the way that you can do this is you got to download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm and then you can get started. It's really fun. We just switched over recently here at All Too Real 2 and I'm enjoying it so far. So be sure to check it out and uh, let us know what you think. Okay, everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. Ooh, yeah. My name is Michael E. Colin II, and with me, as always, is... Is Matthew 2004, um, Haas. So, um, Matt, before we start here, I got a question for you. Sure. Okay, so let's say... You find out that there's a movie with Jane Lynch, Steve Carell, um, Jeff Garlin, Alexa Vega, Evan Peters, and Brie Larson coming out in theaters. Like, tomorrow. Oh, man. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. What, what would I... I would, like... I'd be falling over to get tickets, to be honest. That, that could be some crazy superhero crossover movie. Yeah. Or, you know, with, like, Steve Carell is, like, maybe the comic relief, or you got Brie Larson, so maybe Captain Marvel, or you got Quicksilver, and maybe it's some kind of, like, quasi-Avengers type of story, whatever. Yeah, I'd, I'd totally, totally be on board for that. And you also have Jimmy Olsen, Sam Huntington in there, too. Oh, so. Jesus. Yeah. <clears throat> and Yeah, what, let's go. And, and and Laurie Strode from the uh, Rob Zombie uh, um, Halloween movie. You've got Scout uh, Scout Taylor Compton. You know she's in there too. Jesus. Yeah, that sounds like an all star cast. You've got Hunter Parrish from the TV show Weeds in there too, man. Oh my God, are you kidding me? Yeah, I love that show, and I like Silas the character. Actually, I don't like Silas. I think I yeah. hate his character. But, um, but, but he's um, a good actor. I mean. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, he yeah. plays an asshole very well, so. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, like, okay, now now we're going to travel back in time, Matt. Okay. To the early 2000s. Time travels, like time stone, okay. Okay, like, <clears throat> like this is 2004. Oh. And all of those people are in a movie, man. Wait, they were all in a movie together in 2004? Yeah. Holy shit, what is it? Sleepover. The sleeper hit of 2004 that I'd never heard of? Yes, indeed. Oh, holy shit. It is the greatest movie from the year 2004 entitled Sleepover. <laughs> how ma- okay, how many Sleepover movies titled Sleepover were there in 2004? As far as I know, this is the only one. <laughs> Okay. Well, that's okay. Stiff competition. Yes. <laughs> Did I mention Steve Carell and Jeff Garland 
and Jane Lynch yeah. and Brie Larson yes. are all in this movie. Yes. You know, like, 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 people that have won Emmys and Oscars are in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how could it be bad when you have all of these people in it? I mean, you know, star power and creative power. Yep. You know? And on top of that, mm. it was directed by John Nussbaum. Mm. You know, the director of George Lucas in Love, which is actually really good, by the way. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a short film. But... Yeah. Also, the director of American Pie Presents the Naked Mile, man. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. That was the one I couldn't finish watching. (laughs) Exactly. It's the greatest... That one? It's the greatest American Pie movie released in 2006. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, I like Bandcamp 2005. That was great. But um, yep. So, anyways, <laughs> we're starting a new series here, folks, called All 2000s, where we're going to be covering <laughs> the best, sometimes underrated, sometimes overrated, just whatever we feel like <laughs> it of movies in the 2000s. And we're going to uh, cover this movie that was made for $10 million <laughs> and grossed $10 million point one. <laughs> That's what you call a profit, people. Profit, profit, mm-hmm. profit. <laughs> I mean, technically it is a profit, so... Yes. Uh, <laughs> made point we're one million. Off, we're going to kick off the series mm-hmm. with... <laughs> So anyways, yeah, we're covering the 2004 film Sleepover. This was Matt's, Matt's, Matt's suggestion. Yeah, so let's blame me if it turns out really bad. It's, just, it's my idea. <laughs> yeah, I've already said a bunch of the people that star in this movie. Um, it was written by Eliza Bell who actually wrote Vegas Vacation, which I enjoy. So, Oh, okay. That's a good movie. Yeah. Good movie. Um, movie. Yes. Mm. She, uh... Yeah, she wrote that. (laughs) Then she wrote this. She also wrote Behind the Camera, the unauthorized story of Three's Company. The year before this. So was that like a documentary or something? Or? No, it was like a made-for-TV movie. Oh, okay. I've actually seen it. It was it was basically about what happened behind the scenes of the show, but with like actors playing John Ritter and the rest of the cast, you know. So, yeah. Hmm. yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. So, yeah. Maybe we should cover that someday. If you want us to, let me know. Mike at CullenPark.com. Um, so, all right, what happens in this glorious film here, Matt? Okay, so, uh, it starts off with this girl and her friend are leaving junior high, last day of school, and, uh, her friend is going to move away sometime during the summer, and the other, I forgot their names. <laughs> okay, so, so the, uh, um, the the main star of this movie is Alexa Vega, who you know from the Spy Kids movies. Um, she plays the yeah. character Julie Corky. That's right, Julie. Okay. Yeah, and and her best friend is named Hannah Carlson, and she's played by Mika Borum. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think Mika. I think I think um, Mika was in Superbad. 
I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure it was her. And she only had one, like, scene in that movie. Um, don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure it's her. Because I'm going, this is 2004. Superbad was 2007, so she aged three years. So I'm guessing it was probably her. I don't know. So I just watched Superbad recently, ironically. But, and then somehow I ended up coming up with this movie. Totally coincidence, but that's weird, weird shit happens, I guess. So, uh, <laughs> so Julie and... Hannah are at school and the the bell rings. I think that was a different. And then girl, of course you got that. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> she looks similar, but um, to be at least, um, I mean, sometimes I'm not good with, um, I you know sometimes I'm known to like see an actor and think it looks like someone else and looks nothing like them. So <laughs> um, I've gotten better at that, but I've been known to do that. Um, I've also been known to mishear song lyrics in really weird ways. That don't make any sense has become a sort of like ongoing joke about me like for example I used to think that the Metallica song Enter Sandman that when when James James Hetfield says um, tuck you in keep you free from sin yeah. I thought he said tuck you in keep your free throws in like basketball keep your free throws in and I had no idea how that made sense by going to sleep and tucking you in bed why why you would need to throw free throws at like a basketball court. But um That's how I fall somehow asleep. it made made sense to me. You just shoot free throws or whatever. And... Yeah, I have a basketball hoop in my bedroom and I just throw okay. free throws. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Until yeah, I, I used to have one out I used to have one of those when I was a kid, like those nerf ball ones where yeah. you just cast kind of, Yeah. I think we all did. But but um, you have like a regular you have a regular regular thing with a basketball you just throw it against the Yeah. I have, glass. I, 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 have a, I have a regulation NBA basketball hoop in my bedroom, and um, yeah, your, your, your neighbors below you must love you just hearing that basketball hit the floor. Oh yeah, the they time. Do. Yep. Like, they love it. <clears throat> yep. Anyway, I got off track for a second, <laughs> so, so I, I, had, I, I had to drink a shot of whiskey before doing this because this movie's so terrible. So anyway, so um, so I'm a little bit loopy here, but um. So they're they're at school, and then like stereotypical, the bell rings, and all the kids are like rushing out of the classroom, like throwing all their papers all over the floor, which never happens in any high school or school ever. But whatever. And then our teacher, I will tell you this because his teacher. I I will tell you this. Last day senior year at Central Catholic when I went there, we did do that. We had we 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 were allowed to do that. Okay. Just the one day. Oh, okay. Yeah, we we we. People would, uh, you know, like get a bunch of paper in their lockers just so they could do it. I don't know if they still do that at, at Central cool. Catholic, but they did when I went there to Central Catholic in Toledo, Ohio. So, yeah. Okay. That's cool. If anybody else in their <clears throat> school has actually done that, please let us know because I'm just wondering if that's a real thing in anywhere else. Yeah. Please, yeah, my email Mike at Mike at Colorpark.com or, yeah. or message them on Facebook and ask and say that whether or not your high school or, or um, junior high allows for you to trash the place. Yes. Uh, okay, but by the way, I'm actually watching the movie as we're talking with the sound off. So oh, like, okay, I'm like, cool. I'm like 25 minutes in, so I'm like watching shit. So hopefully I don't get too far advanced in this this gem of a movie. Um, so much complexity and nuance to this film. Um, but um, so so the teacher shows up, and, and this is important because this teacher is going to show up later on in the movie. So it's like a foreshadowing of events. And he gives them summer reading homework, yeah. even though they're graduating junior high and going into high school. So not sure exactly how he's going to check up on their summer reading when they go into a different form of school, whatever. Okay, that's that's whatever. That's first. That's that's inconsistency number one so far. Okay, and so then they're like the Hannah's like you really need to get a life, Mister whatever his name is, and he kind of like has this look like oh maybe you're right, and it's like mm, you're being influenced by fourteen year olds, and maybe you 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 need like to draw some boundaries and like you know have some self confidence. Okay, whatever. So then they they leave, and then Julie's like oh man. Like I, I don't want to sit next to the garbage for lunch because apparently they just let kids literally just sit next to like the huge dumpsters while they eat their lunch, just full of heaping trash. 
and like those are like the loser kids. She doesn't want to sit at that table. She wants to sit at the cool table, which is literally just like six feet away from them and by the fountains. And it's I, like I have a question here too. Okay, so I've seen several movies and they take place in, you know, which I'm assuming is California here, and they eat mm-hmm. outside, you know. We grew up in Ohio. We didn't eat outside usually. We that, usually we usually could... we usually had like a cafeteria or whatever, you know, so you know, maybe once in a while we were allowed to or something, but Exactly. In my high school Oh, yeah, go ahead. No, I'm just I'm just going to say, okay, here's the thing is, do these schools also have a cafeteria as well as the outside eating area because it does sometimes rain in Southern California. I mean, right. it's not often, but there's no roof above these kids. And, you know, I'm sorry, but your peanut butter and jelly sandwich is going to get all soggy if it starts raining. Oh well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Totally. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's an obvious fact right there. Uh, yeah. I so in my high school, the upperclassmen were allowed to go outside when it got warmer, but I think it was only seniors, and I think it was, like, not even everyone. I think it was, like, a maximum amount of people at a time were allowed to go out there or something like that. Um, like, 10 or 20 people, which is not exactly a lot. Yeah. But, um, and I only noticed because one time one of my older friends, like, snuck me out there and let Basically, I got to eat out with them. Like, oh, cool, I'm eating with the seniors. Oh, I'm so cool, you know, type of thing, whatever. And then um, then I got caught and got made. I had to go back inside at the loser table. No, it wasn't the loser table. It was just my, my table with a few friends. I mean, I guess maybe we were losers, but I didn't care about being a loser. So I was like, I was one of those weird kids at school where it's like I knew my role, but it didn't really bother me that much. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. Anyway, start real tangent. But um, the whiskey's kicking in. Okay, so... um. So uh, she's like, I don't want to, I want to sit by the fountains, which is like two feet away from the garbage heap for some reason. I just, okay. And then her friend's like, oh, blah, 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 you'll be fine, whatever. I'm going to move away. And we'll never talk to each other forever the rest of our lives type of thing, and which is weird. It's like, okay, your best friends, like you, you can't just email each other. I mean, this is 2004. Okay. We still had AOL instant messenger back then. Yeah, and stuff like that. It wasn't like it was the like the eighties or early nineties where there was also know, these things called phones. Phones, <laughs> which is interesting in this movie, the people actually use a phone as a phone in this movie because two thousand four <clears throat> that was where everything just converted over to text and Facebook Messenger. Mm-hmm. You know, the glory days there actually was some minimal human contact, even if only digital. But at least you heard someone's fucking voice. Anyway. So she's like, oh, blah, 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 blah. we're going to go home now and we're going to have a sleepover or whatever. So then, like, they get home and then, like... Oh, yeah, while they, um, while they were there, though, played by- while they were there, though, they did uh, see uh, Julie's big crush. Oh. Steve Phillips, played by Sean Ferris. Yeah, that's right. Skateboarding over the, mount- the, the fountain, like, all cool, like, yep. yeah, man. Like you do, <clears throat> radical. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah. Like you do, you just decide you're gonna jump through a fountain and get all wet. Yep. Like you do. And, um, and mind you, Steve Phillips was not even doing this to like impress anyone. He just did it because he felt like it, which is even funnier. He's like, he's thinking to himself, like, I'm not trying to impress a girl here. I just want to jump through this fountain for some reason on my skateboard. Like, kind of like cute, you do. Cute. <laughs> cute and innocent if you think about it like that he's like mm-hmm. you know what would be really cool by the way these are supposed to be junior high students going into high school and they already look like they're probably like in junior year of high school like I, I, I didn't believe it for a second I'm like wait a minute they're, they're playing 14 year olds especially Steve he already looks like he's in college at this point well, and, well, uh, well he was already in high school so oh, oh, he, okay. Yeah, but at the time he's like in his 20s playing that role okay right <laughs> And um, I mean, it's like Don Cheadle, or Cheadle, sorry, um, when he was in that movie about, um, oh, a bas- I think it was a basketball player, um, I forgot who it was, but he, uh, it was like a biography film, and he was playing all different ages of himself, like even like the 14-year-old version of yeah. that when he was like 28 years old or like that, <laughs> which is like hilarious. I forgot so, what it was, it was a really good movie. So, so but, Alexa yeah. Vega was born in 88, so, 
she would Okay, well that's she would currently be <clears throat> be uh thirty two and um so in two thousand four <clears throat> That was, uh, how many years ago? That was, uh, like 15 years ago. That was, no, that was like 17 years ago. Um, oh yeah, 17 years ago, sorry. So 17 years ago. It was 16 at the time. Okay, so she wasn't too yeah. much older. Okay, cool. Exactly, so she was only two years older than her character. Not a big deal, I know. Just to be, a, they looked a little bit older, especially Steve, but like you said, Steve was already in high school, so it makes sense. But, um. Yeah. So they go home. After the cool water, you know, show with the skateboard or whatever, and and then um, they're gonna plan for their sleepover, and then um, Julie's mom, played by the incomparable Jamie Lynch, um, was like basically trying to make it all like kid like, you know, because she still like sees her daughter as like you know a little child or whatever, and she's like wanted to do like some ladybug theme or some bullshit or whatever. And it's like, I don't want to do ladybugs, that's stupid. I want a real sleepover. Because, you know, because when, you, when you're growing up, you want to do a sleepover. That, that really proves how, like, growing up you are. Like, I want an adult sleepover, man. Like, mm, pretty sure uh, any sleepover is, like, already kind of kid-like in nature. But all right, whatever. So then, like, um, she's, like, trying to rush her mom out because she's got, like, a date night with her friends or whatever. And um, her dad, you know, is going to basically, like, sort of hands off. He supervises the sleepover while he's trying to fix their water filter for some bullshit for whatever reason, even, even though the water's fine. but And that's all he does know, he, the whole movie. That's it. The yeah. whole fucking movie. <laughs> all, all, so starting at, like, 2.30 in the afternoon to, like, midnight, he's working on this fucking water filter. There's no reason, dude. Water was fine. Um, but he wanted the water to be perfect. So, you know, he plays the stereotypical, like, handyman dad character in these type of movies. But at the same time, like, he's not actually even good at what he does. But, like, that's what makes it funny because, like, he thinks he's good at it. And he's going to spend, like, an entire day doing bullshit. If, if you're interested, by the way, folks, you get to see his butt crack in the movie. So, <clears throat> yeah, so that's... um good because um, <laughs> everybody always wants to see Jeff Garland's butt crack I mean no offense to him I, mean, I don't want to see anyone's butt crack though. exactly <laughs> so, um, I mean that's just not a no, thing that exactly. I like but, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah I'm trying to rewind the movie back to where we're actually talking about it so mm -hmm. that way I'm not getting confused by seeing scenes by the way I am movie. starting a band called Jeff Garland's butt crack um, we're going to be <laughs> <laughs> a punk band. <laughs> it's a punk band. Yeah, there you go. It has to be a punk band. We we, um, we we'll, we'll play punk covers of country songs. It just sounds right for some reason. It does. Actually, I, I like the idea you had earlier about the the robots are coming for Phil and the Counting. Yeah. Um, album from the New York Times article that was released uh, like today or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> it's an article about automation basically taking away white collar jobs because like everyone knows blue collar jobs are being automated but everyone thinks like oh white collar jobs are safe like mm, actually they're not um, they're going to get taken over too so the article was called robots are coming after Phil from accounting like Mike's like that's a good great album name right there yes it is <laughs> it is <It> really <clears throat> I, I wonder though legalize if you're allowed to copy an article title yeah and then make it you, you know what I mean so you can you can't? Okay, yeah. all right. That's, that's interesting why why you could, but okay. <clears throat> Things like that would be copyrighted, but okay. No, it, uh, you can't copyright what, a title. Kind of... Huh, okay, that's that's cool. You can, you can copyright a brand, <laughs> but you can't cool. copyright a title. So you can copyright Star Wars, which is technically a brand. Right, okay. But you can't, but like if I, like if I wanted to make a movie called Sleepover, I could. Right, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, there already is a Netflix movie. Yeah, there is. That's what I was about to bring up. Yeah, so I never watched it, but is it a remake of this movie? <laughs> I do not believe so. Do not What's believe that, so. You know, okay. <laughs> okay. So they they you know do the whole butt crack stupid thing or whatever, and then like he's trying to fix the water filter. Come on, this thing is 
pause. Okay, there you go. I need to watch this movie. It's too great, okay? Um, and interesting, too, the phrase she says. So they go up into – Julie goes up into their room in the huff because of her mom being all, like, smothering her or whatever. She says, my mom is so blindfolded. It's a weird phrase. I never really heard um, – I mean, I, I understood what she meant by it, but it just it was not a phrase I've ever really heard anyone say before. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 14 years old. I'm, you know, blah, 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 whatever, you know, type of thing. And then they're like, okay, let's start to sleep over or whatever. And then, like, her brother keeps barged in because he's, like, he's, like, from college, but he's, like, you know, unemployed and got kicked out of college or whatever. And Played he's, by like, Sam you know, moving around the, the house. You know. Yeah. You know, just trying to find something to do or whatever, and she's like, you know, like get out of here, you know, type of thing. You know, I'm, you know, I'm growing up. I want a lock on my door because she doesn't even have a lock in her fucking door. Just you know, that's kind of concerning. You know, 14 years old. Yeah, you want a lock in the door. Come on, let's be real. But um, and he 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 was like asking to borrow money from his 14 year old sister. I'm like, dude, like, come on, like you're 19 years old. Um, no, you should not be. And he, he asked for five dollars. Then it was ten. Then it was fifty dollars. I'm like, okay, wait. You're gonna ask for fifty dollars from your fourteen year old sister, really, dude? Come on. Mm-hmm. Um. Anyway, so he's a piece of shit. And then, uh, and then he, she kicks. <laughs> sorry, that's me. So then he <laughs> they got really aggressive, really fast. Um, so then she kicks him out. And then, like, they like start to sleep over. But, oh, so by the way, I forgot to. So like, when they were doing the sleepover, this thing will not start over. It's like. Ah, don't worry about it. We can remember. whatever. So like, <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. Uh, we'll just we'll just Jeff Winger it. Okay. So um, and then uh, she invited this other girl to sleep over because um, I guess like someone else dropped out or whatever, and she needed like a certain amount of people at the sleepover for whatever reason. I well, she really could only have a certain amount, what, is what it was. So. She, she ended up inviting this girl. That makes sense. But basically what it is, she was only allowed to have a certain amount of people. Um, like, like, you, you know, oh, okay. you, you know, like her, her mom said, you know, you can have, you can have three people over. Um, so, okay. so she had originally invited this girl, Stacy, who, um, yeah, who was like a, the popular girl at the school. Um, but then, uh, she said she couldn't make it. And so they, so, then there was this girl Yancey, who's slightly chubby, <clears throat> and was made fun of by Brie Larson. Yep, um, who is the best friend of Stacy in this movie? Fuck you, Captain America, Captain America, Captain, Captain Marvel, Marvel. Not Captain yeah. America, yeah. Sorry. And um, yeah. she, uh, <laughs> yeah. And by the way, Academy Award winner Brie Larson um, is in this movie. Anyway, so, yep. um... <laughs> and so is Evan Peters, as known as Quicksilver. Yeah. Um, so, and that's interesting. And Sam Huntington, who is Jimmy Olsen. And, um, so... Yep. <laughs> so, we've got, <laughs> um... Basically, <clears throat> in the scene, Yancey, who is slightly chubby, is made fun of for her weight by Captain Marvel. And, um... <laughs> yes. <laughs> piece of shit. <laughs> so, um... There there you go. That's a reason for all the people to try to cancel her that wanted to cancel her. Anyway, so, um... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because she was in this fucking movie. Anyways, um, because... <laughs> when she was a kid. In her, you know what I mean? <laughs> the, um... But, uh, so... We have this, uh... Basically, uh... Basically, um, Julie feels bad, so she invites Yancey to the, to the party, to the sleepover, yeah. so that, you know, in place of, in place of bitch girl. Um, yeah. And, uh. <laughs> Far superior choice. Why would you want her at your sleepover? I mean, yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, we do have a, so basically, Stacy, the reason that she didn't, she couldn't go is because she was going to go to this high school dance with her boyfriend. Todd, played by Todd. Fa- played by Thad Luckinbill, by the way, who was born two years before me. Oh, really? Yeah, and was in this movie in two thousand four, playing a teenager. <clears throat> oh, 
Okay, so what year were you born? 77? Yeah, he was born in 75. So that would have made him 29 years old <laughs> when he was playing like a 16 year old. <laughs> wow. Yes. <clears throat> I looked wow. that up and I couldn't believe it when I saw his age. I was like, what the fuck? The guy's like, <laughs> oh man. And this movie is so 2004 because he's got those frosted tips on his hair, dude. Yeah. Like, oh man, this movie is a time cap. He so looks like, like he, he looks like he's a reject from the Backstreet Boys are in sync or O Town or something. <laughs> Anyways, um, wow, O Town. <laughs> I, I totally forgot about them. <laughs> they were like a N Sync Backstreet Boys kind of dollar brand version. Sorry, that's mean. Yeah, well, but, uh, they, 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 they were the band for making the band. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. they were a reality show. <laughs> so, right, I actually liked them though. Um, anyways, so. <laughs> Well, um, back to this. Um, so basically, he he picks her up for the dance, but he's wearing like a tank top, being all cool and stuff, and saying, "Yeah, we're not going to go to the dance." And then they yeah. just pull up into some random park, not like some, oh, right. not like some secluded, yeah, yeah, not like some secluded makeout point, like you would think in a movie. But this is like a park that looks like it's in the middle of town. It, it, he just parks in the grass. Oh, by the way, the scene's coming up right now. Literally, she's waiting for him. Yeah, there he goes. He pulls up in his fucking Porsche or whatever. Some yeah, and and and, 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 and they pull up into this mom. into this park that is probably just you know the park on the back lot of uh, you know Universal Studios or something. Um, because it doesn't even look like a real fucking town. But well, this whole set, this whole movie set looks like it's on the fucking set. Like, yeah, it, it looks like it was bad. shot. I mean, I don't know where it was shot, but it looks like it was shot like you know at you know Warner Brothers or Universal Studios backlot. Um, yeah. <clears throat> there he goes. Yeah. First sexual assault attempt number yeah, he, one. Yeah, he tries. To, he tries to basically fuck her, and um. <laughs> Did it again, number two, right? Like two yeah. seconds later. Sorry, go ahead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And, uh, by the way, he's under age and he's probably 18 years old. Number three, sorry, go ahead. Um, well, actually, no, he was 29. And, um, oh no, it's the actor. No, I mean, it's character. <laughs> and, and, um, it's character. And, and Sarah Paxton, who played, uh, played Stacy there, was born in 1988. Okay. So that would make her 16, just like the other character. I yeah. Think, or the other actor. Okay, gotcha. So, so her boyfriend <laughs> is like twice her age. Right. Well, it was 2004. Yeah. It was a different time, apparently. <laughs> um, 17 years ago, apparently. I mean, God. Like, it's like, it's like weird. Like, I, I try to think of like 2004, right? I try to think of that year as not being that much different than what it is but now. It's, but it's, when I see movies like this, I'm like, it's just God, so funny like, in a lot of these, like, teen, <laughs> teen TV shows and movies and stuff. You do have a lot of the actors playing them are in their 20s or 30s. It's just, it's just hilarious, you know. Yeah. I, I mean, mind I mean, you, just, I, I did, I, we, we did a commentary on that in a movie I directed, Pi Day Die Day, where we actually had people in their thirties mm-hmm. and twenties and stuff playing all of our teenagers, just on right. purpose. So, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But, anyways, back to this masterpiece here. Oh, of course. I mean, um, we. We get sidetracked because we love this so much. We, yeah. It's like, so, 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 you know. so, so we have a sexual assault scene, and so she won't she won't have sex with him. So he kicks her out of the car. Okay. Yeah. She won't have sex with him in public. Yeah. And, That's uh, the other thing too. It's like you know, like I'm saying, it's not a secluded area. No, it's not. It's right in the middle of a fucking grass. And they're in a convertible. You don't even have the roof of the car to hide the fact that you're going to have sex with your girlfriend oh in the car. God, it's, that's terrible. I know. I'm, yeah. I'm laughing because it's terrible. Yeah, it's just I know. So it's just so weird. <laughs> it wasn't even a commentary at being weird. It was just in the movie. Like there was no, like, yeah, there was no like third or fourth wall breaking. It was just like, nope. Here's here's a scene in the movie. And, <clears> on. Throat> and throat> then she gets out of the car and then she calls up, calls, mind you, calls, um, Julie. And actually talks to her with her voice, which yeah. is interesting because we don't really. Do yeah, she, that call, she calls. She uh, Um. She calls Julie. Well, actually, first she called. Uh, she called her her friends. 
Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Captain and, Marvel. And, yeah, she, she and, called uh, she called Captain Marvel and uh, and the other chick <laughs> and um, Captain Marvel and the other chick. That's the name of my other band. Anyways, um, <laughs> they, they they open up for Jeff Garland's butt crack and um, <laughs> it's like it's a punk show. It's really good. Yes, yeah, it's, it's good stuff. <laughs> Punk covers of just Garth Brooks songs. <laughs> Anyways, um, the uh, <laughs> oh. oh god, <laughs> I got friends in low places. Well, wait. Anyways, so um, the uh, <laughs> when when the thunder roars. <laughs> <laughs> so God, so we've got um, she 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 calls up and she's like, let's make a list, a list of what. <laughs> No description exactly. to the audience. <laughs> Nothing. I don't know. Do you want to take Just a quick? List. Do you want to take a quick break here, Matt? Before before we get too more involved in this wonderful film. Oh yeah, because we're gonna need you know to get in to really delve deep into this. Yeah, there's so much going on. Okay, we'll be right back, folks. <clears throat> Scene by. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> What is Gen X? What is the silent generation? What do generations have in common? Hi, I'm Trish the Dish from the Gen X Voice Podcast, and I invite you to listen to conversations I have with folks from different generations, backgrounds, beliefs, and experiences in an attempt to see what connects rather than divides us. Even though Gen X has been called slackers, Karens, or not mentioned at all in some cases, we are the bridge generation, so I feel compelled to do my part to destroy ageism by bringing all these voices together. And, as a bonus, each guest gets to answer some 80s questions at the end of each show. So download and listen to Gen X Voice today on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts, and let's see how much we have in common after all. And we are back to talk about a great movie that stars Emmy, Golden Globe, and Oscar winner Brie Larson. Mm-hmm. When you watched this movie, Matt, did you think one day that actress is going to win a Golden Globe, an Emmy, <clears throat> and an Oscar? Well, I don't know, because I just saw the movie a few nights ago, so... <laughs> well, let's say you didn't know that that was her. Oh. What did you think from that performance, that one day? <laughs> no. Okay. I mean, she wasn't really a main character, was she, though? No, I mean, she, she wasn't. She was just kind of a supporting... <laughs> yeah. I mean, but we, we, we also have, you know, Emmy and Golden Globe winner Jane Lynch in the movie. True. And Golden Globe winner Very Steve Carell. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of awards in this movie, is all I'm saying. They all happen yeah. in the future. Jeff Garland. They all happen in the future after this movie. Yeah. Though, but, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, this movie is what set them off. You know, it was, this was like a, a trampoline, if you will. Mm-hmm. You know, just jumping them to higher, higher stardom and success. Yes. Because of this movie is what happened. Yes. So. They all have to thank the sleepover, or, or sleepover rather, um, you know, for, for that. Yes. So, so where were we in the plot here? <clears throat> we were at the bullshit, um, list making thing that nobody knows what they're talking about. Um, yeah. From the, the, um, the mean girl. Whatever her name is, um, Stacy. <clears throat> Stacy, there you go. Then she gathers her friends, and they do like a video chat with Julie and her friends. And then, no, sorry, Stacy shows up to their, her house. And then she video chats with her friends, and they decide to do some weird scavenger hunt type of thing, which is. I guess something that people do. I don't know. Um, where they have to do like a bunch of weird stuff. Yeah. And I've done one scavenger go... hunt in my whole life. Yeah. 
but what I think is funny is that she's supposed to be like the most popular girl at school. And like, this is what the popular kids do, I guess. And the first night of summer is, um, you know, do a weird thing like that. I don't know. So like, they had to do all this weird shit where they're like, oh, we're going to have to, you know, go to the mall and rearrange the clothes of the mannequins or something like that. At the Old Navy. Steve Carell. Yeah, the Old Navy. And Steve Carell's like, he's like the the security guy there. And he's like, he keeps looking back and like they have to like freeze like to make it look like they're part of the display or whatever. See, the thing I'm I'm trying to figure out is, is he the security guard of the whole fucking town? Apparently. Because he's everywhere. Yeah. He's he's the dude driving the the stuff the car around the neighborhood and make sure because mm-hmm. they got no playing about the party, and then he had to drink Julie's Coke to make sure it wasn't alcohol. Which, again, why would you drink alcohol in a Coke can in your own house? And, I mean, I do believe legally he had no right to check to see if it was alcohol. Right. Legally, her no. dad is in the house, and she could probably legally drink alcohol if her dad allowed her to. So if, we're going to, yeah. yeah. We're going to move past that, but also, too, like, you got to be the most paranoid person in the world to drink alcohol out of a different container in your own fucking mm-hmm. house. Yeah. What the hell? Like, <laughs> and you didn't know that the security guy was going to come either, so it wasn't like you were just planning for that. Like, you're like, no. Just in case anyone shows up at all, I got a Coke can here, and it's got, like, you know, rum in it or some shit, so... Whatever. Well, what what I do, myself, because I'm so paranoid, I drink water out of a Pepsi can. Um, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yes. It's a good one. Mm. Then you drink Pepsi out of a water bottle, right? So... Yeah. But I have to well, drink. They, I, but I have to drink the crystal clear Pepsi because otherwise they know it's Pepsi. Oh know? God, <laughs> crystal Pepsi! Oh boy, like they still make that stuff, crystal Pepsi. Once in a while, they'll bring it back. Oh jeez, yeah. So, yeah. That was a weird flavor to me. It didn't taste <clears throat> anything like cola. Um, it yeah. tasted like toothpaste almost, like like <laughs> like a weird type or whatever. Um, oh yeah, so. So, by the way, <clears throat> so they're trying not to get caught, right, when they do all this shit? Yeah. And her friend thinks, here's a good way that you'll not get caught. We'll just completely destroy your mom's dress that you're wearing by cutting it into pieces. And, like, how would her mom not find this out later at a later date when she goes to wear that dress and she realizes that it was torn apart and cut? Like, oh, yeah. One of, the, one of the things on the scavenger hunt list is that they have to have a drink Bought by the bought for them at this club by a guy. So yeah, yeah, that's like so, so they go on to like a police approved <clears throat> dating <laughs> dating website <laughs> and set up a blind date with some guy in the club. Was an adult. Yeah, it's a police approved website. Yes, which apparently means that they don't check your age when you sign up. Yes. They um, don't realize that some 14-year-olds are signing up for the fucking website. <laughs> <clears throat> so, that's right. They find some dude who is like, you know, they decide they like or whatever. Named like Dave or some shit. And um, and then, they're, yeah, right now they're sneaking out of the house. So they're trying to, by the way, they're totally fucking up this garden that her mom had made. So again, so trying to be, you know cute about this, but they destroy her dress by cutting it into pieces, ripping it at one point as well. So it's like, okay, well, now I mean, a cut's one thing, I guess, if you know what you're doing, but they don't know what they're doing because they're not fucking, they're not dressmakers, but ripping it? Um, I, I, I love how really in, in, easily, in movies, like, ugly dresses, yeah. all you have to do is rip off a few things, and then all of a sudden it's like the sexiest dress in the world. <clears throat> right. Well, the dress wasn't even ugly to begin with. And it, you know, it's just a nice regular red dress, and then they just destroyed it for no mm-hmm. reason at all. Oh no, sorry, they destroyed it to make a fourteen-year-old look extra hot. Yeah, to go to a fucking club because uh, she was so pretending that she was a swimsuit okay. model. Right. So we got several problematic shit going on in this movie already when it uh-huh. comes to 
stuff like that. We got sexual assaults three times against a high school dude who's played by a 29 year old, but we'll just say he, he played a 16 year old, but I'm guessing he's probably like a senior in high school, whatever. Um, <clears throat> so then they sneak out, they go destroy the, the garden because the garden's like one of those ones that's kind of like a, like a up, upper one. I don't know how to phrase it, but like they jump down basically on top of like the, the wooden Trell- shit. Like trellis. Yeah, there you go, trellis. And they just destroy a bunch of flowers because, again, her mom's not going to notice that, apparently. By the way, her mom must love the color red because the flowers are red, the dress is red. I think she's wearing a red dress later on. Oh, yeah, because her mom's at the club that they go to. Um, yeah, that's so, fine. So, they go to the same club. So, so, so they, they basically they end up uh, stealing a car from uh, Yancey's house, which yep. is like a an early mm-hmm. like electric car. Yeah. Um that's like indestructible as well. Um so 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 they they go they they drive in the car to the uh to the club. Yep. So no licenses, 14 mm-hmm. years old by the way. So <clears throat> Yeah, they they sneak into the club. Um inside uh some equipment boxes. Like sound equipment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and while they're there, they see their they they they, uh, they go to meet their date Dave, and mm-hmm. uh, turns out it's their teacher. Yep, from earlier in the movie. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, so, so she throws on some sunglasses. Julie does. Walks over there in her dress, and he's like flirting with her, and doesn't realize she's fourteen years old because she has sunglasses on. Yep, it's the whole superhero trick, you know. Mm-hmm. You just wear a mask or something, and then no one knows who you are. Oh, by the way, another creepy thing. So he only recognizes her because of her laugh. That's kind of weird right there. That, mm, okay. It's like, that laugh seems very familiar. I'm like, why yeah. are you, how come you, like, memorize your students' laughs? That's kind yeah. of creepy. But then again, I guess it wasn't his fault. Maybe he just, you know, he's a smart guy or whatever. I don't know. So, so but once he, like, yeah. So, so anyways, um, yeah, all, this is also after she had had him order a sex on the beach for her. Um, Oh my god, that was so fucking awkward. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah. Oh my god. Like I, I, w- I was like cringing when I saw that. I'm mm-hmm. like, this is. Oh, by the way, too. So right now, what's going on? Before you mention that, so the dudes, like Evan Peters' character, who's like a spazzy skateboarder dude, him and his friends broke in to Julie's room and were rummaging through her fucking clothes, which is creepy as fuck. Um, and then he found her bra. And he was pretending to wear it. Yep. And Evan uh, Peters, by creepy, the way, is doing a uh, stupid, creepy, creepy, creepy. creepy voice. Like, like, hi, I, I, I'm Evan Peters. Yeah, like, whatever. Oh, God. I, <laughs> what a guy. This movie is so fucking sick. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. So, like, and then, like, his, so then, like, Julie's brother shows up, and he's like, um, wrong room. And he's like, don't you notice something missing? And they're like, oh, the girls. So I was like, wait a minute. You expected the girls to be in their room while you were rummaging through their clothes that even makes it creepier like it, it, like you just have no boundaries whatsoever like he's walking someone's room and just decide oh i'm gonna go through your bras what the fuck who does that yeah the Apparently dude, the, the dude was dropped on his head a few too many times um yeah the uh yeah and by the way um the brother um um is is covering for them because they're offering to pay him money so he's covering for the fact that they left. Oh yeah. By Good the point. way, that's another plot point we missed in this wonderful film. Um, yeah, we got we got to make sure we get every detail correct because <laughs> this, you, the movie won't make sense without it. So and we're we're, uh, we're we're assuming if you're listening to this, you watched the movie. Sure. Yeah. If if not, <laughs> let's go let's go with that. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't need to worry about it. Um, yeah. So. So then, before that too, because I'm I'm like watch just literally as we're talking right now. They're doing a mannequin thing, 
and Steve Carell's eating a bunch of food or some bullshit, and then uh, they're like taking off the clothes of the mannequins for some reason. Yeah, the, the one of the <clears> things before... on the uh, on the <clears throat> on the scavenger hunt list was that they had needed to get pictures of mannequins wearing certain clothing or something. <laughs> yeah, you gotta do it. I mean, that's mm-hmm. part of it. So, um, I mean, you just gotta do it. But um, so before that, though, when they got into the got into the mall. Um, they're in the car, and then some person drives up and like flirts with like one of the girls or whatever, which again kind of creepy, because um, they're fourteen. I mean, then again, you know, they're driving, so they probably just assume well they can drive because you know they shouldn't be illegally driving the car or whatever. And so it gets into this whole weird, awkward thing where like um, Yancey's like, nobody ever you know looks at me because I'm fat or whatever. And then Hannah, like probably her second line in the movie so far, is like, "Would you would you rather eat a brownie or celery?" And then like Yancey's like, "Is that a trick question?" And she's like, "Exactly." And so you'll just date guys that like brownies. And then like Yancey's like, "That's a really good point." Like look on her family. Oh my, it's not a fucking good point. It makes no fucking sense, idiot. But, because like, her only character, then- her the only the only. Part about her character that they decided to write into this fucking movie is the fact that she's slightly chubby. That's it. That like that's her whole identity is is that. And yeah. don't get me wrong, I understand. You know, if you have something about your body that you don't like, whatever. You know, you think about it. But like literally, that's like her only defining characteristic in the movie. Yeah. And then and then so like shortly after that, we find out too that um, she's like just sitting there by herself at some point. Um. I forgot if was it at the mall or somewhere else, and then this guy starts flirting with her. It was, it was at the club. Fat, it you know, was at the club. Yeah. At the club. That's right. Sorry, he's like a DJ or does something to do with like the the uh, the electronics or whatever at the at the club and like the sound system guy or whatever. And um, and so of course you know cause only fat people can go out with other fat people. That's you know the rule in a lot of these movies and stuff like that. So you know. So it's like, yay! Oh, she found someone. It's like, yeah, but you're saying that. Only, okay, whatever. I'm not gonna get too much into that. Um, that's like saying, you know, only black people can date black people, and only Asian, you know, whatever. Okay, um, or only person who's got one eye can date someone with another person with one eye, or whatever. Um, you know, because everyone's got to be in their place, Mike. Don't you know that? Everyone's yes. got to, you know. No, no diversity. Everyone's got to, you know... So it makes the world go around, man. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, makes it go around with bombs and warfare, but okay. And, um, uh-huh. Yep. <clears throat> I like how we turn politics into this, this movie about the sequel for... <laughs> yes. The greatest, so, the greatest political so, comedy of all time. Yeah, so Jeff Garland is trying to fix his fucking water filter and made the water like some nasty green sludge bullshit. He wants to make his son test, taste test it. Because, by the way, so they ordered a bunch of pizzas and for the, the party to make it seem like they're still upstairs. And then um, her brother was going to take up the pizzas up to her room. But then his dad stopped them and was like, you know, like, test this water. And it just looks terrible. So then he goes upstairs. By the way, so, like, he ends up, like, completely gorging himself on the pizza with the, the family dog. Yeah. Just absolutely look disgusting. Like, like you oh do. My God, like, you're going to puke. Yeah. Oh, here it is right there. So, like, they're literally about to gorge themselves on, like, eight different pizzas. But, yeah. you know, that's healthy for a dog, right? That, they won't kill a dog to have that much fucking cheese, you asshole. No. So, <clears throat> they they basically do this whole, like, racing to see how fast they can eat. Because, again, you know, eating super fast, that's really he- healthy for you. It's not going to cause, like, digestive problems, like a stomach ache or anything like that. So, when you eat, Make sure that you just stuff as much food in your face as possible, preferably greasy food, mind you, to really make it extra healthy for you. Well, the grease helps it go down see faster. What happens, like, how it... True. So that's that's science scientifically proven. So like, uh... <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so they're at the club right now, and then they're about to have the weird like Chris Hansen talk going on pretty soon. Um, you know, why don't you sit down for a moment? You know. Yeah, I, I think it would have been this girl you were talking to. I think it would have been great if Chris Hansen would have just walked in there. Um, it would have been it would have been actually super hilarious, but I think that was before 
the sh- uh, to to catch, catch a predator. predator. Start I don't know. Guy. Yeah, or maybe. And, I think and, it may have started the same actually as came out, but um, and and, <clears throat> and 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 it was way before Chris Hansen decided to uh, hop on this whole Onision thing and try to make himself a uh, YouTube famous, and then and then sell out all the YouTubers that actually did research on Onision and. Um, mm-hmm. And then create a show for Discovery Plus based on it. Yeah, and basically fuck exactly everybody before, over. Sorry. Yeah, before Chris Hansen just basically destroyed his entire reputation in like six months time period. Yeah. Um, because he had money troubles apparently, and just well, that was that was before all this. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, but oh, wow. but, but now since but but when he tried to do his comeback and he was doing this whole thing where he was investigating Onision online, he uh, right. basically. Uh, who we've talked about on a previous episode of the show, um, he he yeah he he basically fucked over a bunch of YouTubers right. and basically made money off of the whole situation. Yeah, it was terrible using research terrible. that other people yeah. did. But anyways, back to this yep. great film that does not include Chris Hansen. Um, no, it does not. <clears throat> it just includes a catfishing her teacher by. Apparently, putting on sunglasses that just makes her look like a different person, I guess. And, um, yes. And then, so they they see they see her mom at the club though with their friends. So then they're like, "Oh shit, we better we better get out of here," um, because you know my mom's gonna catch me or whatever. And then um, they she, dro- she, she drops up, the um, scarf. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. She, yeah, she drops it, and then her mom later finds out later on. I, th- I think that's my scarf. So then she gets suspicious, like, "Uh oh, what's Julie up to?" You know, she really at her sleepover or what, you know, type of thing. <clears throat> so now we got that element in the movie. We because there's the no possibility whatsoever on. that there are two Paisley scarves in the world that look the same. No. It's, I mean, it's just not. I mean, obviously not. Pop- a small town like this that has a club? No. Because <laughs> we, all, we all know a small town's got a fucking dance club. So, um, <clears throat> so she orders a sex on the beach bullshit. The bartender's like, can I see your ID? Then that's when the teacher gets suspicious. Like, wait a minute, that, that is kind of interesting. You do seem pretty young. And then, by the way, that phone, that text looks so fucking messed up. It's like, there's like lines and shit like by it, like a old Nokia f- flip phone or something yeah. like that. <clears throat> <clears throat> and um, so they leave. Wait, that was Jimmy Olsen, right? Was that the bartender? I can't, I saw... I, I couldn't see. Oh no, J- J- Wait, Jim, Jimmy. Sa- Sam Jimmy. Huntington played Jimmy Olsen in uh, Superman. Um, he's the brother in the movie. He played uh, Jimmy Olsen in, um, in uh, Superman Returns or whatever the one with uh, Brandon Routh. Oh, okay, not not Supergirl. Jimmy no, Olsen, no, not not that. Okay. No, no. <laughs> okay. yeah, I was looking. I was looking for him, and I'm like, I didn't no. see. No, he's, yeah, he. I just saw. For, for, no, no, Makad yeah. Brooks is not in this movie, so no. Um, oh, okay, good. yeah, good. Because that would that would ruin his reputation. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> God, I miss him in that show, Supergirl. Though oh, it's, I know. it's not the same without him. No. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, but, so, um, so basically, what we anyway, got going on so, here is then the then uh, <clears throat> then uh, Julie's friend um, fixes the teacher's hair makes him he 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 loosens his tie and then she messes up his hair and takes off his glasses and then somehow now he looks exactly the same and um <laughs> exactly <laughs> does not look any different but somehow now he's hotter <clears throat> and then some random hot age appropriate woman <clears throat> comes up to him <laughs> <laughs> and asks him to dance. <laughs> exactly. Who just comes out of nowhere right after that happens. Like he yeah, his just, hair gets messed up and then all of a sudden she's like, Ooh, I gotta ask this guy to dance. <clears throat> you know, like <laughs> What the fuck? Right. So how are all these underage people allowed in the club? Because you got the Evan Peters characters like doing this weird spazzing out dance. I don't know, they snuck in the the two the girls did. Julie and, yeah, he, Julie and her well, friend, too. but I don't know how all the rest of them got in there. It's like it's like they have no security at this club at all. Apparently, like just yeah, terrible. Um, <clears throat> oh, here's the the meet cute with Yancey and the dude. Yeah, so so, so so Yancey meets meets uh, meets the fat dude, um, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> y- Yancey and the Fat Dude. That was my favorite '80s uh, crime drama. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's another uh, punk band name. Yep. So you got the three <laughs> bands. You got you get Yancey and the Fat Dude opens up, then it's Cat Marvel and the other chick, and then it's and then it's um, Jeff Garland's book. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Once the pandemic's over, they're going to be touring people. Yep. Make sure you go out and see them. If you want more information on this tour, message me at mike at cullenpark.com. It's just going to be me in three different bands. Just... Yes. There's no other band members, it's just Matt. It's just me with three different band titles. Yes. <laughs> oh, was how I was able to, to book enough music. I just pretend to be three different bands. It's like, yeah, like an hour and a half on set or something. <laughs> That would be great. It's just going to be me on my own guitar. And I so, so we should probably speed up through this through this uh, great film here. Um, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so we end we end up having a situation later where um, Julie has to go get the boxers of her uh, of her crush, Steve. Oh yeah. Um, on the way there, she, she, the, the, the car is stuck, so they, they don't have anything, any, any way to get there. So she, she finds a, uh, a skateboard and then skateboards in her dress across town. And Steve sees her in the, in the skateboard, <laughs> on the skateboard, I mean, and thinks she's the hottest thing since sliced yeah. bread, you know? And, um, right. Yeah. The, uh, the hottest thing since sliced bread. I just think I made up a... <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that's the name of the tour. Um, anyways, the, uh, the, the hottest thing since sliced bread tour featuring, um, <clears throat> Jeff Garland's butt crack. Right. And others. Oh, and, by um, the way. Yeah. I just want to mention something really quick. So, yeah. So the whole um, this this the age appropriate woman scene just happened. Yeah. I forgot that I forgot that. So like right after she asks him to dance, he puts his glasses back on to make sure that she's hot enough for her to dance. It's just so fucking terrible. I know. <laughs> it's like, hmm, maybe <laughs> like he just does it right in front of her. Like, well, let me make sure you look good enough. Okay, yeah, you're good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> This is the same guy movie. who was. This is the game, same guy who was just macking on a fourteen-year-old. Anyways, um, yep. The, um, <laughs> oh god. So um, we've got um, we've we've got the situation where she has to go try to steal um, a pair of boxer shorts from her crush. So mm. she sneaks into his house. The mean girls call the security on. Um, you know, basically Steve Carell's security company on on her saying that somebody's trying to break into this guy's house. Um, she breaks into the house. He's looking in a yearbook because trying to figure out who the hot girl on the skateboard was. <laughs> and um, that's the fourth band, <laughs> hot girl on the skateboard. <laughs> yep, hot girl on skateboard. And then um, got yeah. band name galore today. Um. I know. Um, so she's sneaking around. She ends up, uh, hiding in the shower. And, um, while, while she's hiding in the shower, uh, he comes in there cause he's about to go take a shower and he gets naked in front of her, <laughs> drops his boxer shorts on the ground. Mm-hmm. She's looking at him like, Ooh, he's got a butt, you know, and anyways, um, <laughs> In the creepiest yep. fucking scene in the movie, besides the last creepy scene. Anyways, the um, <laughs> the, the, the scenes are just creepy, um, especially when you think about the yep. fact that Alexis Vega is like a teenager at this time, and this guy was like twenty two. Um, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but um, yep. Anyways, so she ends up getting the getting the boxers. Um, oh, this was also after a really creepy scene where she smells his Nike shoe. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <clears throat> yeah, she smelled his Nike. That's another band. <laughs> she smells, she yeah. smelled his Nike. 
And um <laughs> the um Yeah, so so that was creepy. Anyways, she gets the boxer shorts, gets out of there, um Steve uh Carell's car gets hit by the by the girls in the uh uh, the, the girls are there outside in the, in the, um, in, in the, in the electric car, but they ran out of juice. So they're trying to, uh, they're, they're trying to charge it up. They try to push the, push the thing to an electric outlet so they can <laughs> plug the thing in. And, uh, it ends up rolling down the hill into Steve Carell's uh, police, or not police, but his uh, security car. And yep. while they're, uh, so his his airbag goes off. He's trying to catch those girls, but there's nobody in the car. He sees uh, Julie sneaking out of the uh, house. Calls her dad. My thing is, is he asks for her phone number and she gives him the fucking right phone number. <laughs> gives him her real name. Exactly. It's like, have you not <laughs> seen like Ferris Bueller or Parker Lewis or any of the other fucking or Zach Morris or anybody <laughs> ever on television or a movie who actually was a schemer who knew how to get out of things. You know, it's like, <clears throat> fuck you. <laughs> yeah, take take some cues from Zach Morris. I mean, he always yeah. knew to get out of shit. So. I mean, take some <clears throat> cues from Mike Seaver on Growing Pains. Anybody who's a schemer on television, just fucking, you know, you had to have watched one of these shows. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's got no ID, so she can't, they can't he can't rummage through her purse or whatever. Yeah, he can't prove that she is Right. Julie Corky. Which is the weirdest fucking name ever. Anyways, um... Yeah. <laughs> Corky? <laughs> Julie Corky. That's a good a band name right there. Julie Corky's real phone number. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> so, so anyways, um... The, the brother answers the phone at the house and he pretends to be the dad. So mm-hmm. she gets out of it. Um, like everything in this movie. You know, she just miraculously yep. gets out of everything. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. They end up going to a dance later on with one of the weirdest scenes I've ever seen in a movie in my life. <laughs> where Summer Glau from, uh, from Firefly and Sarah Chron- the Sarah Connor Chronicles and stuff like that. Um, she, uh, is the ticket girl, the lonely ticket girl at the, uh, at the dance. And, uh, Hmm. Julie gives this speech. Okay, she gives this speech to, uh, Summer Glau's character, the ticket girl. Um, she says, I know who you are. And then ticket girl's like, you do? And she says... You're out here collecting tickets instead of being inside at the dance. You spend your weekends doing extra credit algebra. You play way too much Monopoly with your parents. And you've never eaten anywhere near the fountain. And in four years, I will be you unless I get into the dance. (laughs) So, it's like, hey, you're a fucking loser. Exactly. <laughs> and and if you don't let me in that dance, I'm going to become a fucking loser too. Most people in that situation would just say, fuck you. Exactly. You don't know who the fuck I am. <laughs> but no, Summer Glau is like, hey, go ahead, you know. That, that, that rousing Patton-like speech just moved me. And, um... <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? I know. <clears throat> Because <clears throat> that's the way to win somebody over is basically tell them how much of a loser they are. I mean, in this town it is apparently. So, um, do you want to take another quick break here, Matt, and then we'll talk more about the movie and then maybe some reviews mm-hmm. and shit after that. Sure, we'll be right back, folks. <laughs>
It's the ninja from the Ask the Angry Ninja Show saying, come listen to the show. We got the ninja wife to give you your movie reviews. We got the conscript to give you the ninja news. And we got the battle to talk about your sports. And as always, it is the Ask the Angry Ninja Show. So ask me a question. We'll give you the ninja knowledge you need for your ninja life. Search for us anywhere you get your podcast from. Just search for the Ask the Angry Ninja Show and enjoy the show. Okay, and we're back. Um, so <clears throat> then we have a situation where they get into the stance. The last thing that they, they they're basically tied now for the 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 um the uh, scavenger hunt that decides where they get to eat during senior year. Yeah, I don't know if we even mentioned that, did we? <laughs> That's why they were doing this fucking thing. Oh, that's right. Well, originally, yeah. I don't think that was the plan, but then for some reason. It became part of the yeah competition yeah, the, or something. yeah the competition basically decided who got to eat at the uh, who got to eat near the fountain or who got to you know eat near the big blue dumpsters and um so yeah. you know because that's how things get decided right and uh, plus too if you're super popular you can't just basically like use your leverage to just force the, the loser kids to eat by the dumpsters anyway. So it's like you, you're you forced to obey this, you know, <laughs> this well, competition laws or something like that. Well, well, legally in the United States, it's in the Constitution <clears throat> that scavenger hunts are binding. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah, it's it's the, it's the uh, like, you know, 444th Amendment to the Constitution. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, cause I, I, I haven't read the Constitution. I, I, I didn't realize that the filibuster was a, you know, a constitutional right that you have to do no matter what and, you know, stuff like mm. that. So I didn't realize that was. Well, what they should do. I didn't realize I think in the, I think in the future for us to decide who the president is, instead of having votes, mm-hmm. we should have, uh, scavenger hunts. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean just, just our... imagine, you know, Joe Biden and, uh, and Donald Trump out there, you know, try, trying to get Steve's underwear. <laughs> I'm just imagining that. <laughs> there, like with like his cheeseburger in hand, yeah. and then Joe Biden's like sniffing his hair and stuff like that. <laughs> He's sniffing more than Nikes, and um, <laughs> That's another good name. He's sniffing more than <laughs> Biden. Sniffing more than Nikes. <laughs> oh Lord. Oh boy. <laughs> so, um, so so they're in the dance, and the thing that they have to do to break the the tie on the uh, on the scavenger hunt is mm-hmm. uh, get one of the uh, king or queens of the dance crown. There's a. Uh, while they're there, Stacy sees her boyfriend there, her twenty-nine-year-old boyfriend, um, <laughs> <clears throat> who's you know dancing with some other underage girl, and um, <laughs> the um, sorry, Thad looking Bill. I'm really sorry that I'm making fun of your age in the movie. You <laughs> you look really good for your age. He still does even to this day. He still looks like a fucking teenager, and he's like. Oh god, forty five. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, he was on like Young and the Restless for years as well. So it's like, you know, oh wow, he's one of them. They're sexy soap stars. Um, so he, uh, <laughs> anyways, he's there at the dance with a girl that he supposedly been. She says that they've been together for six months, and uh, so then her and Stacy start fighting. Which I'm just like, he's the fucking asshole. <laughs> That's what I thought. You know, it's like it's 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 always like that in in uh in reality sometimes too, where like if if you're if if your dude's cheating on you with a girl, you get mad at the girl but not your dude. You know? Right. It is weird. And I, I don't get that. I mean my thing is it's like, you know, if somebody was cheating on me, which has happened to me, I didn't get mad at the dude she was cheating on me with. I got mad at her. <laughs> you know, it's just like what the hell? Right. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these movies are like that, like the old 2000 movies and shit like that or whatever. Like, Yeah. 
And I've, I mean, the thing is, it's based in reality, though, because I've actually seen that in reality, like where people I know, you know, their their boyfriend is cheating on on them and they're pissed at the girl that cheated on, you know, that probably didn't even know, you know, he had a girlfriend or wife or whatever, you know. So it's like, fuck you. The guy's a loser. Get rid of him. Once a cheater, always a cheater. Anyway, okay. so... Sorry to, interrupt. Sorry to interrupt you, but creepy right now. Evan Peters' character was on a skateboard right now, and he was under the car, and he was just staring at Julie's legs as the Steve Carell basically is making her call the her, her house. Mm-hmm. And he's just staring at her legs underneath the car as he's on the skateboard. Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> this movie... <laughs> called the <clears throat> sexual predator sleepover and um that's what they should rename it um anyways so we're at the dance there's a dance contest evan peter's character dances with stacy the popular girl and then gets his picture taken with her when they win the dance contest doing their fucking stupid dances I know, his, like, spazzing out dance that he does throughout the whole movie. Mm-hmm. And, um... Because <clears throat> he basically is a stereotypical, like, dorky kid or whatever, like... Yeah. <clears throat> he's he's basically, um... I don't know, he, he's, like, the character that, uh... Shia LaBeouf played in Even Stevens, but in a movie or something. I don't know. <laughs> But I guess he played yeah. a similar character in Phil of the Future. I've never seen the show, though, so... Um, oh, wow. Which was another Disney Channel show, I think. Um, that or Nickelodeon, one of those channels. Um, so... Yeah, they... What ends up happening is... Uh, Steve sees... Uh, sees her at the dance. Um... He won, by the way, he was the king. So he gives his crown to her and they dance together because he gets to pick who he dances with after he wins the crown. He dances with Julie, gives her the crown. They're about to kiss and stuff, but then they have to go home. Um, this was also after uh, um, Yancey and the fat dude reunited. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> I'd call him by a name, but I don't even know if they gave the character a name. He probably did, but I forgot I'm it. not sure. Um, but they got reunited at the dance because he was setting up the sound equipment there. And that brings me to another question here. <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out how old this guy is, too, because... <laughs> Yancey, exactly. I assume, is 14 as well. Exactly. No, she is, because she was in the school with them at the beginning of the movie. And this guy's gainfully employed. <laughs> exactly. Who, who wrote this and didn't think that any of this stuff was weird? I mean, maybe he's a teenager that's working for this company, but I don't know. Well, he could be, but that's that's kind of like a big-time job. I yeah. mean, that's not like a, a summer, you know, ice cream parlor shit. You know, this mm-hmm. is like a... Unless he was just really, really smart... Yeah. No, that's possible. <laughs> but they didn't explain any of this, so I'm just assuming he's like a he's like a nineteen or twenty year old dude who's uh going after a a, a middle schooler. And um <laughs> That's just creepy, man. I'm just saying <laughs> I know. I don't think I don't think any of this was malicious. I just don't think they thought it through. No. <laughs> I mean, because that's the point where, you know, he's dancing with her in there, and then that, that's where I expect Chris Hansen to show up and be like, you know. Exactly. So exactly how old do you right think, how, how old do you think Yancey here is? Um, <laughs> yeah, I was just, uh, you know, I, I don't want this cookie anymore. <laughs> I used to watch those clips, like, all the time. Like, yeah. I just, like, I, I, I would just... And, like memorize all of these like little lines like I don't you know I don't want this cookie anymore guy just walks away mm-hmm. or the, the the other weird one which is so creepy where he's like it's like the, the cleanest best best pleasure in life it's like oh <laughs> shit, like, it's fucking terrible <laughs> so um like, 
Anyways, Yancey and the fat dude are dancing. Right. Who's, and, a, who's a potential predator. So, yes. Um, uh, potential Yancey predator. Potential. Yancey and the potential yeah. predator um, <laughs> are dancing. And um, they find out that they both like brownies. So then, you know, of course they make oh, yeah, They're, 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 they're yeah. like a match made in heaven. Um, because... So we went back to the whole brownie argument yeah. earlier, or whatever. Because the only, the you know, you know, because like the best way to to start a relationship is to find out, you know, if you guys like the same food, because that's gonna come into play somewhere down the line, you know, to make sure that you know you both have the same taste in liking brownies, which most people like in the fucking world, anyways. So, anyways, um. <laughs> Who doesn't like brownies unless you're like allergic to chocolate or something? But well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's like saying, "Oh, I like pizza." You know, yeah. So does like eighty percent of America. But um, let's uh, okay. So so they're you know they're they're basically I guess happy happily ever after the two of them. Um, but they have to get home because uh, they realize that. Uh, Jane Lynch is coming home. It's another name of the band. Um, so they have to hurry up and get home before the mom gets home. Yeah. And, of course, they do. But she didn't get her kiss with Steve. Nope. And uh, when they... Uh, they get back home, they get in there, they, they have a whole, you know, sneaking in scene, they... They're, they're trying to sneak through a rope into the house, some bullshit, where they end up pulling the treehouse onto the house. <laughs> you know, because that happens all the time. And, um... Yeah. They get into the house. They get on... In, they get into their, uh... into their sleeping bags on the floor. And so... Everything seems to be fine. Then we have the next morning. Girls go home. Julie says goodbye to her friend who's moving away, basically. Uh, then, um, because they won, by the way, oh yeah, they won the fucking scavenger hunt. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, so, um, they, uh, her mom basically realizes that, you know, she had left and all this other stuff and ends up basically saying that she she trusts her now and gives her a lock for her door. Uh, they end up, uh, she ends up um, <clears throat> going up into her room. She sees the crown hanging on the, on the treehouse outside. She goes out there and, uh, Steve is creepily waiting inside there. <laughs> and then he kisses her. And then we have uh, the last scene where it's uh, school year and the Stacy and her friends are all and Stacy and uh, Captain Marvel and the other girl are uh, <laughs> sitting <laughs> sitting by the dumpster and you know then the credits start to roll. Yep. And that's the end of this great, great film. Yes. The greatest movie to ever feature so many award-winning actors. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> Only thing that could have made this movie better is if Dan fucking Whitney was in it. Um, <laughs> exactly. He would have been a great, like, security guy or whatever. Yeah. Like, Listen here, girl. You're gonna, you're gonna call your dad... And I'm going to go eat my corn dogs right now because I haven't eaten a uh, corn dog in the past 15 minutes. <laughs> Belch, fart noise. Now we got to go know, take some prowl sick and uh, <laughs> get her done. And, um, yeah, so. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, um, do you want me to read a couple of reviews here, Matt, of the film before we wrap things up here? Uh, yeah. Okay. Do you want me to start with a good or a bad one? Uh, oh, a good one. Try that. Okay, a good one. Let me see yeah. if I can find one here. 
Okay, an 8 out of 10. Here we go. From uh, Green Ray Ent. From uh, 16th of May, 2005. Um, a fun tween movie. So many movies nowadays either have young kids acting too old or old people pretending to be young. Sleepover is just an above-average teeny bopper movie with some really fun moments and nice performances by a talented young cast. This uh, target audience doesn't have a lot of movies to be proud of, but Sleepover can definitely be considered a fun one. All of the performances seemed on the money. Alexa Vega and Scout Taylor Compton seemed to shine. There are a couple of very funny scenes from Steve Carell, who plays the -the over-the-top security guard, looking to break up the girls' fun. I commend director Joe Nussbaum for tackling a difficult genre and age group and doing a commendable job with it. Don't run it expecting anything deep, but certainly is a good time. Okay. So many movies nowadays either have young kids acting too old or old people pretending to be young is the first line of that review. (laughs) 29-year-old Thad Luckinbill was in this movie. (laughs) Playing a fucking teenager. Okay, anyways. (laughs) And how many movies are there, though, where a young person plays an older person? I've never seen that very often. No. So... Like, well, I think it's like, saying acting. I think they're saying, like saying I think they're saying acting too old, not like playing a character oh, who's too okay. old. Something like <laughs> probably like the the Dawson's Creek thing, where like you know you're speaking way above the you know intelligence level of a fourteen year old. Yeah, you that know. that really irks me a lot. That, yeah. that, that, that whole shit. It's like no one talks like that. You're yeah. an idiot. Like, but okay, but but, but but I love Dawson's Creek. Don't get me wrong. Oh, me so, too. Yeah. It's just that it's it's so weird, and jarring, mm-hmm. like. <clears throat> Pacey. Yeah. <laughs> so here's a here's a here's a bad review if I can read. Okay. This one's kind of long, but I'm going to read it all. All right. <laughs> okay. It's a two out of ten from Fall Geek. This was written on April twenty second of two thousand twelve. Oh. Um. It's a okay. It says seriously? Question mark? Question mark? Question mark? Um. This movie is downright terrible. Usually I like cheesy movies because they are so stupid and pointless that you can laugh at them. But this movie is just all around awful. There are many reasons that this movie is bad, but I'll list them here. One, the acting is very questionable. It's so, it's supposed to be, to be, uh, feature a good talent, it's supposed to feature a good talented cast. But the actors may as well be robots, as they're not putting any expression into their lines whatsoever. Two, all of the jokes that are supposed to be funny are just stupid. Three, the main character, Jewelry, is a complete selfish, self-centered snob. She complains to her parents about not getting a lock on her bedroom door, and that her mom treats her like a baby, and that her crush doesn't even know she exists. It makes you want to slap her across the face. Four. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Four. The film basically encourages bad behavior. What with a scavenger hunt and all the parents' reaction to Julie sneaking out of the house is far too lenient. They don't punish her, but instead reward her with a lock for her bedroom door. If I did that, I'd be grounded for life. <clears throat> Five. The fake emotion in this movie is overwhelming. The writers tried to throw in some emotional scenes that didn't fit to the script or the theme of the movie in the first place, and all of the actors failed to deliver them. Six, the ending is so predictable, it's ridiculous. My five-year-old sister could see it coming. Julie ends up with the guy of her dreams, and her friends and her... Fr- her and her friends win the scavenger hunt, and are skyrocketed into popularity. Newsflash, life isn't perfect. Seven, <laughs> the movie is really shallow and pretty smart. Pretty much implies that being popular and wearing designer clothes and dating the cutest boy in school are the most important things in life. It sends a bad message to young viewers. 
Lastly, <laughs> eight. Okay, this is eight. Lastly, the guy that the chubby character Yancey winds up with at the end of the film says that he has a one night gig working at the bar club the girls sneak into. For this to be true, he'd have to be at least 21 years of age. Which means that a 21 year old man has fallen in love with a 14 year old girl. Jesus Isn't Christ. there something wrong with that picture? And then the last thing they say is the movie is awful for all of the reasons mentioned above and is totally not worth the hour and a half of your time that it takes up. And my advice is don't watch it. <clears throat> wow. So, so much passion for hatred for this movie. Like, yeah, like I know. He's re- like, he's really, really <laughs> into like how much he hates this movie. Like, he he also, or she, too, depending on, I don't know. Oh, right. Yeah. True. Yeah. My only takeaway is that they are jealous that they didn't have the same childhood that Julie had. Like, like their parents sound very stern and strict. He's like, God damn it. They gave her a lock on her door after sneaking out. I would be severely punished if that happened. It's well, like, I, I had the exact, I had the thing. exact same childhood as Julie because when I snuck out and was able to steal my crush's boxer shorts and, um, well, wait, what? As you do. <laughs> I mean, everyone does, so, <laughs> I mean, you know, right after you do the, the hot skateboarding, and then, uh... S- smell the Nikes. <laughs> yeah, and smell the, and sniff the Nikes, yes. Yep, sniff the Nike, like, yep. With Joe Biden, so, mm-hmm. uh, sniff the Nike with Joe Biden. <laughs> it's his weekly address to the nation. Uh, it's his weekly... <laughs> Instead of like the fireside chat with uh, with Franklin Delano Roosevelt or something, that sniff the Nike with Joe Biden. <laughs> it's a radio it's, address to the nation. It's, yeah, it's like it's not the fireside chat anymore. It's sniff the Nike with Joe Biden. <laughs> it's like it's like oh god, it's like, my fellow Americans. Um. This Nike smells rough, you know, just like our country. We need to come, <laughs> we need to come together like a pair of Nikes. To, <laughs> yes, yeah, we need to unite just as we're as just as you tie your shoes. We need to <laughs> we, we need to tie together. <clears throat> oh boy! So so, um, so, so, anyways, Matt, would you recommend this movie to anyone? You know what? Ironically, yes, I would. Uh, it's because it's so bad that it's it's like fun to watch. It, it's 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 like it's not one of those bad movies. Just this um, stupid. That's not really fun. Like that one movie we reviewed. Like what was it called? The the fast, the fierce, or some shit yeah. like that. <clears throat> Which wasn't even entertaining. It was no. just boring. This movie is stupid, but it doesn't know it's stupid. It's not trying to be stupid. But it's not boring either at the same time. So, <clears throat> yes, I would I would say, sure, go ahead. Oh, wow, Steve Carell just got knocked off his bike after running over the crown. <clears throat> that was interesting. Anyway. Poor um, guy. Anyway, so. No, it's interesting, yeah. no. Yeah. Go ahead. What's that? You said it was interesting. Oh, though? well, I was just going to say that. Well, I was going to say that, like. The ends, like the scene, like where her friend, like moves away, like that was actually oddly touching. It was like almost seemed like it didn't even shouldn't even be in the movie because <laughs> none of the rest of the movie had that kind of acting in it at all. Like there was no emotion. Then suddenly there was like this tear felt goodbye, and it just felt like that's a good scene, but it doesn't really belong in this movie because like nothing set up. Like cause didn't you go to film school with the guy once for like basically like the teacher? told them like it was such a great scene but it did not make any sense to be in the movie that yeah. he wrote really. so you can have something like that where it's actually really good but like this movie has been so goofy the entire time well there there, I mean, there is the thing in, in, in film school and in kind of any kind of art or anything like that where you gotta kill your darlings so basically you could have a great scene but if it doesn't fit in the movie don't put it in there yeah exactly um <clears> so <throat> Uh, so she says goodbye to her friend. That was really touching, but again, had nothing to do with the movie. I mean, the movie mm-hmm. was just so. I mean, basically, really, there's there no reason. No there's her, there's uh, no reason for her character to have moved away. It exactly, wouldn't. It, it doesn't affect the yeah. plot at all. 
it, it, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going for. It's like it would make sense if this was like Julie was trying to come to grips, you know, with losing her friend, mm-hmm. you know, to a different state or whatever, and that was like because you know, there have been movies like that where yeah. like they have like one last night out, but then like mm-hmm. the one character is just kind of trying to avoid the truth, and then like eventually, you know, see, they start getting into an argument or some shit like that. You know, see, that's the thing about this is is I think they're finny, they're trying to fit too many tropes into one movie. Yeah. And um, and none of them really pay off. I mean, I, I would recommend the movie. It's kind of fun to watch and then make fun of. Um, and I mean, there were some good funny scenes here and there, but um, it it's overall well, overall it's just a bad movie, but not the worst thing I've ever seen. Um, anyways, anything else before we wrap things up here, Matt? I mean, yeah, it's it's you know it doesn't have Dan Whitney in it, so that's that's a plus. Um, yeah. You know, there's no Prilosec commercials or, ad, you know, advertising in it, so, um, you know, <clears> um, <throat> you know. But after watching the movie, I really wanted Domino's Pizza and to go to Old Navy. Oh, me too. Um, actually, I had Domino's Pizza the other week and it was terrible. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but this made me want to have it again. So. <laughs> watching the dog and the brother just pig out on it, so. Mm-hmm. Uh. So, um, anyways, folks, um. Hope you enjoyed that little walk down memory lane of sleepover. Um, if there's any other movies you want us to cover like this or better, um, please just let us know and um, send send me a message at mike at cullenpark dot com. Check out our Facebook um, group, All Too Real Two Podcast Group. Um, you can suggest anything in there, or post anything you want. You know, just talk amongst yourselves in there. That's fun, you know, and. Um, Besides that, um, check out our Patreon, subscribe, share the show, um, you know, be good to each other, be kind, rewind, wear a mask, <laughs> and wear a condom. <laughs> bye bye Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at CullenPark.com.